Hello friends, my name is Ambassador Mandy Ogojo Ogwe and uh, this is Otakada Cyber Church Ministries where we are seeding the nations and God is transforming lives through the timeless truth in his word. Uh, today is uh, Friday, uh, the, uh, the 11th of June 2021 and Otakada content count is uh, 2,220,320. And the title today of uh, the Enough is Enough to Captivity of Satan and Welcome to Freedom in Christ Jesus is this. Where does uh, greater exploits fit in the context of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the end of days? And where are we missing it so badly? And how can you and I be fruitful unto abundant fruitfulness that remains even unto the end? The story of my encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and his burden to put up, uh, put upon me for unity in uh, the body of Christ. And then my engagement with late prophet T.B. Joshua, the man of God, uh, my tribute to him. Uh, okay, so um, if you miss uh, the last series, the last series we, we talked about was part 27. Uh, it says, will Nigeria collapse? If not, why not? was unity in Christ, loving one another, despite our differences, was Jesus' prayer for unity. Okay, now for today's uh, prayer, you could get access to that content online. Now for today's title, where does greater exploits fit in the context of the gospel of Jesus Christ at the end of days? And where are we missing it so badly? Plus, how can you and I be fruitful unto abundant fruitfulness that remains even unto the end? was the story of my encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and his body put upon me for unity in his body. Plus engagement with late prophet T.B. Joshua, the man of God and a true one. So let's dive in uh, to uh, discussion today. So where does greater exploits fit in the context of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the end of days? And where are we missing it so badly? I first want to define what is uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, what is the gospel? The question is, the, what is the gospel? Is perhaps the most important question a person can ask. The word gospel literally means good news. It is a plan that God has designed to save sinful hum humans from eternal separation from him. What is the gospel? The bad news. In order to fully understand how God, how good this news really is, we must first understand the bad news. We are all sinners. The Bible presents a clear and consistent message that all people have sinned. And you can read that account in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. It says, For all have sinned and fall short of glory of God. Sin means that we have missed the mark, the perfect standard that God has set for us. As a result of the fall in the Garden of Eden, every part of us has been corrupted by sin. Our minds, emotions, Flesh, we don't, uh, and flesh, we don't seek after God the way we should. Now, the penalty for sin, the penalty for sin is death. And Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. What is the wage then? It is the money that is paid or received for work or services. In other words, it is what you deserve, what you earn. In Romans chapter 6, verse 23, that debt is a wage for our sin. It is what we earn. We deserve to die and live separate, separated from God forever. So what is the gospel? What is the good news then? What's the good news? There's, since there is no way we can earn our way back to God, the Bible says he came to us. This is the good news, the gospel. Now Christ died for you in Romans chapter 5 verse 8. It says, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. The Bible says that even though we deserve the death penalty for our sin, Jesus took the penalty. He died in our place. Three days later, Jesus rose from the dead, proving that sin had been conquered. You can be saved through faith in Christ. In Ephesians chapter 2, 8 to 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by work so that no one can boast. We can depend on Jesus to forgive us and give eternal life rather than eternal death. 
The question is, are you ready to implement the plan by receiving God's gift of his son, Jesus Christ? If so, believe in Christ and commit the rest of your life to him. Remember, saying this prayer will not save you. You are simply expressing your faith to God through prayer. Father, I know that I have broken your laws and my sins have separated me from you. I am truly sorry. And now I want to turn away from my past sinful life towards you. Please forgive me. I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, died for my sins, was resurrected from the dead, is alive, and hears my prayer. I invite Jesus to become the Lord of my life, to rule and reign in my life, heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You can find that account in Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Now if you decided to receive Jesus today, welcome to God's family. Now as a way to grow closer to him, the Bible tells us to follow up. What does it say? Follow up our commitment. Get baptized as commanded by Christ. Tell someone else about your new faith in Christ. Baptize in the water and baptize. Baptize in the Holy Ghost. All right. Spend time with God each day. It does have to, it does not have to be a long period of time. Just develop the daily habit of praying to him and reading his word. Ask God to increase your faith and your understanding of the Bible. Seek fellowship with other followers of Jesus. Develop a group of believing friends to answer your questions and support you. Find a local church where you can worship God. Now, the gospel message is to what? It is to believe Christ, to love others. Response and result is as simple as that. That's to believe in Christ and to love others. The gospel message does not stand alone. It has three parts. You can't have one without the other. It has a following path, the word of God, written word in the Bible, and also revealed to us by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that agree with the written word. Others' words that come to us from the Lord are a true word of knowledge, word of wisdom, revelation, dreams, visions, etc. Number two, the deeds or works. So the gospel has three parts, the word of God, the, day, the deed or works, and three, the resident power of God. All right, so I'm taking number two now. The dead, the deeds or works. The things that we do with the words that we know. Works of charity as outlined, outlined in Matthew chapter 25 from verses 14 to 46 thereabout. And with witnessing to others, discipling others, praying for others. Uh, you can read those accounts in Mark chapter 16 verse 15 to 20. That is gospel on legs, all right? Faith with works. Faith with works. Now, number three, the resident power of God. You know, so for signs, miracles, healing, deliverance, restoration, and, uh, and by the indwelling power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, if the gospel is all in God, like so many of our brothers and sisters in Christ do, and forget to develop and deploy the deeds and the power of God, what we get as a consequence, the gospel of the word. What did I say? The gospel of the word with very strong doctrinal inclination that fit perfectly into our human traditions. Okay, We get dead spiritually and some instances dead physically as a result of not deploying the power and the deeds uh, 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 with the, uh, because of the gospel for the gospel. If we settle for gospel of, uh, of deeds, our works only, Without the power and the words, what we get is a gospel of deeds, okay? Uh, the gospel of, of deeds or the gospel of charity, which is not complete. Anyone can offer help to people who have, who have need. Even corporate organizations do this to bolster their image. There must be a differentiation between world's efforts and God's kingdom effort. Now, if we settle for the gospel of power without the word or the, de the deeds, it's subject to our abuse, and the devil can do the same. That is where fruits have to be paramount to determine if this is of God or the devil. You can read that account in, in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 7, from verse 15 to 21. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 to 21, uh, the tree and its fruit. He says, Jesus said, uh, was communicating this to, to, to uh, as he was speaking. He said, beware of false prophets, teachers who come to you dressed as sheep, appearing gentle and innocent, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. 
It says, by their fruits, you will recognize them. That is, by their contrived doctrine and self-focus. Do people pick grapes from thorn uh, brushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every healthy tree bears good fruit, but a unhealthy tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the water, into the uh, fire. Therefore, by their fruit, <coughs> you will recognize them. Sorry for that. And it says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So where does greater exploits um, uh, come into this tree classification of the gospel? So greater exploits is in the intersecting point of the word, the works, and the power. I repeat that, the word, the works, or the deeds, and the power. To begin to contemplate how this sits with the end times and to address the above questions in the title, I'd like to call to the witness stand today, Prophet Daniel, who had a glimpse of the end time. I'll just take a part of that message so that we can reposition ourselves in the light of the happenings around us today and need for greater exploits in God and the need to instruct many in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's read uh, Daniel chapter 11 uh, verses 31 to 35 and I read, and the armies shall stand on his part and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place there the abomination that make her desolate. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupted by flatteries. But the people who do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And those who understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be held with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. And some of those of understanding shall fall to try them, to fail to try, to fall and try them and, and to purge and to make them white even to the time of the end because it is yet for a time appointed. And then I read uh, Daniel chapter 12, 21st century King James Version and I go on now. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince who standeth for the children of the people of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone who shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that are wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as it starts forever and ever. Can you imagine that? And that's exactly what we're doing, turning many to righteousness. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and the knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood two others, the one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, who was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these uh, wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, who was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and saw by him that liveth forever that he shall be for a time, times, and half. And when he shall have complete, accomplished scattering the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of their wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that make it desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waited and come to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. But go thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of days. 
Finally, let's hear from Jesus on how we uh, we just oppose greater exploits and Jesus' mandate to us. Let's read Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 20, and John uh, 14, uh, verse 12. And, and I read that now. I assure you, now it's Amplified Bible, uh, John chapter 14, verse 12. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, anyone who believes in me as Savior will also do the things that I do. And he will do even greater things than this in the extent and outreach because I'm going to my father. At Mark chapter 16, 15 to 20, we, we read the account or the final message of Jesus to his disciples. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature as we're doing right now. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take off serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall take lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs wonders, signs following. Amen. Finally, Jesus gave, up, gave us his working in, uh, his, uh, this working in Matthew chapter 24, verse 4 to 22. Uh, let's read from the message version. He said, Jesus said, watch out for doomsday deceivers. Many leaders are going to show up with forged identities claiming, I am the Christ, the Messiah. They will deceive a lot of people. When reports come in of wars and rumored wars, keep your head and don't panic. This is routine history. This is no sign of the end. Nation will fight nation and ruler fight ruler over and over. Famines and earthquakes will occur in various places. This is nothing compared to what is coming. They are going to throw you to the wolves and kill you. Everyone having hitting you because you carry my name. And then going from bad to worse, it will be dog eat dog. Everyone at each other's truth, uh, throats. Everyone hating each other. In the confusion, lying preachers will come forward and deceive a lot of people. For many others, for many others, the overwhelming spread of evil will do them in. Nothing left of their love but a mound of ashes. Verse 13, uh, 14. Staying with it, that's what God requires. Stay with it to the end. You won't be sorry. And you will be saved all during this time. The good news, the message of the kingdom, will be preached all over the world. A witness sticked out in every country. And then the end will come. Now, but be ready to run for it when you see the monster of desecration set up in the temple sanctuary. The prophet Daniel described this. I read that earlier. If you've read Daniel, you will know what I am talking about. If you're living in Judea at the time, run for the hills. If you're working in the in the year, don't return to the house to get anything. If you are out in the field, don't go back and get your coat. Pregnant and nursing mothers will have it especially hard. Hope and pray this won't happen during the winter or on a salad. This is going to be uh, trouble on a scale beyond what the world has ever seen or will see again. If these days of trouble were left to run their course, nobody, nobody will make it. But on account of God's call, uh, chosen people, the trouble will be cut uh, short. Now, to, con to conclude this first part of uh, just opposing a greater exploit with the gospel of the kingdom and the fruitfulness. Now, let's go to that. So since Jesus issued these words in Matthew 24, the clock has been ticking steadily towards the end. We are sure that wickedness will increase and that the love of many will wax cold, but we must endure to the end. Deploy the gospel of the word. Deploy the gospel of the deed and deploy the gospel of power. Don't deploy one or two or do all three. Do all three for greater exploit in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the next question, how can you and I be fruitful unto abundant fruitfulness that remains even unto the end? So we take our reading from Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 to 21, and John chapter 15, verses 1 uh, to 15. We saw that earlier, but I will just for emphasis, I'll just read that again. Uh, beware of false prophets, teachers, 
who come to you dress as sheep, uh, appearing gentle and innocent, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. By their fruits, you will recognize them. That is, by their contrived doctrine and self-focus. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the unhealthy tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Everyone, ev therefore, by their fruit, you will recognize them as false prophet. Now, everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will, uh, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my father who is in heaven. Now, let me read John chapter 15, verse 1 to 15 very quickly. I am the true verse. Now, we try as much as possible to read the scripture because the scripture has its message. The message can preach by itself. You know, I don't need to add or subtract. All I can do is expatiate on what the scripture is saying. That's why I'm reading them. So John chapter 15, uh, verses 1 to 15 says, I am the true vine. Okay? I am the true vine. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes, so that it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have given you, the teaching which I have discussed with you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine, neither can you bear fruit pro uh, producing evidence of your faith unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears more fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. If, you, if anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown out like a broken off branch and withers and dies, and they gather such branches and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, that is, if we are vitally united and my message lives in your heart, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified and honored by this, when you bear much fruit, and prove yourselves to be my true disciples. I have lived, loved you, just as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love, and do not doubt my love for you. If you keep my commandments and obey my teaching, you will remain in my love. Just as I kept my Father's commandment and remain in his love, I have told you these things so that my joy and delight or my delight and delight may be in you and that your joy may be made full and complete and overflowing. Now, disciples' relationship in each to each other, verse 12 now. This is my commandment that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another, just as I have loved you. No one has greater love for nor stronger commitment than to lay down his own life for his friends. You are my friends if you keep on doing what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you my friends because I have revealed to you everything that I have heard from my father. Now, let's do some class. Let's break down, down what, what we, let's break down what we just heard now. Producing fruits. How and what? How do we produce fruit? Producing fruit. And what is this fruit all about? Number one, uh, there are five of them. We have to a Christian should produce fruits and grow in doing it. How? Fruits, first and foremost, be more fruits and see abundance of fruits. And finally, the fruits will remain. The fruit will remain. Very, very important. Number two, this is possible. Producing fruit. To tell you how is it possible if we remain in him in John 15, 5, through purification by fire in John 15, 2, and Hebrews 12, 11, Mark 9, 49, through constant communication with the vine three, Christ Jesus, John 15, 4 to 5. Now, number three, to produce abundance of fruit means what? We are true disciples, John 15, 8. We glorify and honor the Father, John 5, 15, 8. Uh, Matthew 5, 16. This is the condition for our prayers to be heard, okay? Number four, the marvelous effect. What is the effect? Well, love, when we produce food, love, joy, peace, generosity, and much, much more. Uh, you can read us account in Galatians chapter 5, verse 44, Ephesians, uh, 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 Galatians chapter 5, so Ephesians chapter 5, verse 9, uh, 
uh, then sanctification, eternal life, Romans 6.22, joyful and thankful contribution. That's the things that will come out of our life. And what are the rewards? What's the reward? Great joy here on earth, John 15.11. Uh, B, a great recompense, John 4.35-36. Now, fruits, what are they? How and where? So the, the three classifications here. To produce fruit, what it is our vocation. To produce food, it is our vocation, right? Number B, it demonstrates that we are disciples. You can look at that, John 15, 8. Number C, it spares us of being prone by the vine dresser. John 15, 2. It brings answers to our prayers, John 15, 7 and 16. It is a way to glorify the Father, John 15, 8. So our fruits, this is what, what it does. Now, number two, to be fruitful requires how? A constant purification, John 15, 23. Okay? And remaining in him. To be fruitful requires to remain in him, uh, to be constant, go through constant purification, remaining in him, keeping the word of God. And number three, the result where? He makes us intimate friends. So when we produce, it makes us intimate friends, John 15, 14, B uh, and B. He opens to us the Father's uh, purpose, John uh, 15, 14 to 15, and see he guides us con uh, to continually enjoy his love, John 15, 10. Now let's do some self-assessment here. Who am I in Christ? Ask yourself these seven questions. Am I lacking flavor? Number one, there are seven of them. Am I lacking flavor, weak or tasteless, lacking vigor or interest, insipid salt, Matthew 5, 13. Number two, a house over the sound, like, uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 49. A fruitless vine tree, John 15, 5 to 6. Number four, a lamp under a bed, Luke 8, 16. Means you've got gift, you're putting it under the, under, under the bed in order to allow people to see. Uh, number five, weeds, weeds in the middle of the wheat. Am I that? Matthew 13, 30. Number six, an old wine skin. Am I an old wine skin without uh, bringing out the new? Number seven, an illegitimate instead of a legitimate son or daughter. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 8. So go and remain fruitful unto abundant fruitfulness that remains is your experience at the very end. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the story of my encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and his burden put upon me for unity in his body. Because the last uh, discussion we had, I, I talked about it uh, briefly, but this is, these are the details, essentially. Uh, the body for unity in the body of Christ was thrust upon me after a vision I received on Saturday, the 22nd of April, 2006, about 5 a.m. in the morning during a 40-day fast. He had instructed me to start praying for the church and leadership. It was three days to the end of the 40 days fast that a vision of the divided body was shown to me. Now, on the 16th of March, 2006, I was pacing up and down the hospital. Okay. Now, on the 16th of March... On the 16th of March, uh, 2006, there was a pause there with the recording. So I was pacing up and down the hospital hallway in London as, as, my, as my wife had already been in labor uh, for three days. The doctors finally concluded, okay? The doctors finally concluded that if she did not have the baby naturally by morning, she would have to undergo a cesarean section. Unknown to us, my mother-in-law had already seen in a vision that um, vision that she might not make it through uh, this delivery. Thank God for godly mothers and laws. For of course, my wife and I did not know about this. So my encounter. It was during this pacing up and down that I received a strong impression upon my mind to initiate a 40-day fast beginning the next day which was the 17th of March, 2006. I was alarmed because I had never carried out a 40-day fast before prior to this time. This is how you distinguish the fleshy thoughts and, and thoughts impressed upon you from our heart to our mind by the Holy Spirit in us. He will tell you to do something scripturally, scriptural that you would not naturally succumb to. I began a conversation with this spontaneous thought lighting upon my mind, thought in response to thought, impressions of what I would be praying about for 40 days. Next instruction was that I should pick a jotter and a pen and I began to uh, write there and then in the hospital uh, until the, word, the impression I was receiving. God right, and pray for my wife. I found out the prayer points coming to my mind were on pastors, the churches, and unity in the body. It was then I asked God if I were to carry out this task, 
I want to see him before these 40 days fast ends. There was no response. I believe now because the condition for him manifesting was going to depend on my obedience to the first instruction uh, to fast uh, for the 40 days. So obedience is key. A point to note here before I continue the story is that God will not take the next move beyond your last point of obedience. Mind that. If he instructs you to do something, you don't do it. He shuts down until you get back to the last point of uh, disobedience and obey. Uh, read Jonah's account. Jonah ran in the opposite direction to God's assignment. Through the storm, as long as Jonah was in disobedience, God never spoke. Until Jonah, after his futile attempt to commit suicide, failed, he cried out to God, and God responded. Now the encounter continues. Behold, on Saturday, the 22nd of April, 2006, Three days to the end of the 40-day fast, at exactly 5 a.m. in the morning, God kept his part of the bargain. I was half awake when this being in human form, with his hands folded behind his back, went for, uh, bent forward slightly, looking at me on the floor, walked gently, one step at a time, not in a hurry, walked towards me into the lounge, through the window area. I could make out his form but could not see his face clearly. You know the type of dressing Jesus dressed in some of the movies that I've watched before. Immediately he, can, he came near me. The area around my feet where he was standing began to vibrate with so much force as if it never existed. More like the area just dematerialized, so to speak, as he moved towards my chest. Uh, towards uh, my chest, the same thing uh, uh, happened. There were no words to describe the raw power that, of that experience. I lost track of time and I became afraid and began to beg that it would end and he should tell me what he wanted me to do for him while rolling uncontrollably on the floor from one end of the, of the lounge to the other. That was my encounter with the manifest power of our Heavenly Father. Now the detailed vision of this unity. After the, that trance experience, I began to see different vision of the body of Christ. On one occasion in the dream, the Lord Jesus Christ walked in. His body was all disjointed, but connected with tiny skin ligament. Each of the parts was a church ministry I knew. I could make out ministries I was familiar with. The connections between the body parts were not firm. I now understand that the church institutions or ministers as we know them today are dividing his body. The individual members of his church making up his body because of the pride petty ego, and all the laws that the flesh present, manifesting in the church competition, leadership struggle, diversion of members, uh, running down other ministries, infighting going on between church members, uh, leadership stealing and living flamboyant lifestyle that does not reflect the living standard of members and the list goes on. If you're such, I plead you, depart from iniquity because our God is a consuming fire. And remember the sin of Balaam who for monetary loss misrepresented God and handed God's blessed children unto Satan through evil counsel to the adversary. I now ask the Lord where I was to fit in this lightly connected, disjointed body of his. He told me to look for churches that make disciples of men and that I should not be moved by numbers. The church is you and me. Now, clarity of vision uh, of the purpose. The rest is history. I now realize my conf confidence in him was built up after that encounter. I now had a sense of purpose and mission. More importantly, because of that encounter, I now know there is a living God. It's no longer a head knowledge. It's now a heart knowledge. And I pray for every child of God under the sound of my voice that there will be an encounter with the living God. That will make a, whole, a zillion difference to your engagement with God on a daily basis as you have done it prior to now. So just pray and ask God, I need an encounter with you. And he has ways of doing that. Now, all the assignment God gave me in subsequent dreams and visions were consistent with this first assignment. There has been no controversy at all. I do something uh, I do sometimes derail, but he lovingly, he lovingly leads me back and sometimes with bruises to show for disobedience. The power and the presence of the Holy Spirit has enabled me to accomplish things that I would naturally not be able to in reaching out to specific areas of assignment. God fills us with his Holy Spirit to equip us for ministry. Never take on any tax for God without a divine enablement and assignment. Now, clarity of dialogue. The revelation gives me the confidence and reassurance that God is available more than desirous to engage us in conversation if we're willing to tune in to his frequency and ask from him in faith. 
He speaks through trance, open visions, as in this case, through dreams, through image impressions, spontaneous thoughts that light upon our minds, through circumstances we face, people we meet, men and women of God, through children, through silence and through word of God and other variants. It is critical to note that the inner witness and the word of God has to agree with what we have seen, heard or impressed on our mind. Satan and demonic spirits also speak, show and impress upon our minds as well. Satan can masquerade of angel of light, so beware. God speaks, he is still speaking and will continue to speak. We have to be ready to obey his instruction and keep the flow. Now, there are other, uh, other, uh, Jesus, uh, other messages to the churches on unity uh, to uh, Dale Pfeiffer. Then the voice of the Spirit said, This is what you have done to my church. You have defiled the purity of my pride. You have torn my beautiful pride, bride into pieces and dismembered her. You have divided the parts of my body and put them on display. You have exalted some of the parts and scorned others. I have watched while you ridicule that which I call holy. My heart is broken. I can bear it no longer. Dale. Uh, second, Dale again. The Lord said, Behold, they are coming, even now. They are approaching. Behold, my great company of apostles and prophets. Uh, see 1 Corinthians 12, 28, Ephesians 4, 11, 16. Some have already begun to work among the body parts to bring healing and restoration to the bride. That's Dale uh, Pfeiffer. Another message again on unity from Dale Pfeiffer. Jesus spoke with divine admiration, saying, I have released the apostles of my right hand and the prophets of my left hand to do the work for which I have called them. In the days to come, the things that have divided my body will be rooted up and turned down. My spirit will demolish all that separates and all that seeks to honor one above another. For all are, all are made by my design and all must be honored. This is the word of the Lord. It shall be done. The structures that are man-made will be shaken and will fall. Uh, Hebrews 12, 25, 29. My true bride, my holy bride, will come forth in all her glory. So the vision and the burden of unity was written in borderless church without walls or denomination, uh, which were, were books that I've written. I also written a book about T.B. Joshua. Okay, so my engagement with, uh, with late prophet T.B. Joshua, the man of God, and a tribute. Account of my meeting with Prophet T.B. Joshua of a synagogue church of all nations, Scorn. I wrote a book about T.B. Joshua and Scorn ministry via this link on Amazon in 2029. And it's uh, T.B. Joshua, the misunderstood and misrepresented uh, uh, prophet at Scorn. Now, if we don't love one another, we'll falsely falsify our claim to be disciples. That's Pastor uh, Thabiti Anyawili. And division, strife, and jealousies block Christians from becoming spiritually mature. If we want to grow up and become like Jesus, we need to learn to think like Jesus. We need to learn to think like he does, okay? And be united in him. And then Requina says, from the first day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit has proven that he will only come to the degree that we have unity. So what was my mission to scorn? I will give account of my engagement with Prophet T.B. Joshua in his office on Thursday, 15th of April, 2010, at about 4 p.m. Three months prior, the Lord has shown me three different visions of the calamity that was to befall the Nigerian nation in January, on January 1st, and the 7th, and March 21st of 2010. He had instructed that intercession be made by selected churches in Nigeria. Service churches were to be visited in each of the 36 states, uh, capital, and then including Abuja, making uh, 37. Now, 12 copies of the prayer book, Revival in the Land, 2010-2012, uh, were handed to each church to intercede for revival in the land, beginning with the church over a 36-month period, which expired in 2012. Okay, and so uh, the trip took me all around the country to 260, country, 260 churches. 3,120 copies of the prayer book were distributed in Nigeria, excluding the external location because it wasn't distributed not, not just in Nigeria, but also uh, around the world as well. The mission took 12 days for the Nigerian part of the discussion, 12 uh, of this excursion. The mission took 12 days, 7,000 kilometers. Squan was the final church visited in Lagos. I was not able to see the problem on the 14th and was rescheduled for the next day. So I was escorted to his office. There was no long wait, no red tapes. I did not see anybody, any bodyguard, and his office was as humble as humble can be. I started my mission 
I seated my mission, handed him the copies, and he prayed that the Lord would give me the voice to push the message through. And indeed, the Lord has given the message to push the message through. After that visit, I have watched, I have worshipped on uh, on in Squan on three occasions. His messages were straight and direct to the point. And anyone that can't even read can understand his message. The manifestation of the gifts of healing was unquestionable. On those visits, I never discerned a contrary spirit in operation, but the love of Christ was resident and active. Remember, the churches I go to were led by the Spirit of God. All the seven churches in each of the state companies, capitals, were led, or I was led by the Spirit of God to go uh, to those churches. So I didn't just come up with, with dates and uh, the churches that I, I just felt like going. Tribute to late Prophet T.P. Joshua. Uh, you are indeed a man of God who demonstrated Christ to the lost and the world in simple gospel words of God, in gospel deeds and in gospel power. You demonstrated Matthew 7, 1 to 5 very aptly. Judge not that you be not judged. And when you were judged by never replying to any of your critics because you understood Matthew 7, uh, verses 1 to 5 well. You have also reproduced yourself through core principles of discipleship by giving your pulpit to others whom you disciple to preach the gospel of Christ, to demonstrate God's power and to demonstrate God's uh, deeds to the hurting, the hopeless, and the helpless in society, exactly the way that God walks through you whilst you were here. It is a virtue worth emulating. It is rare trait in our modern-day Christendom, where paparism and mammarism empire Building Christian organizational endeavors have become an order of the day devoid of the love of Christ and the unity which so, is so key in our day and age. You are a man of humility. You are a true man of God beyond comparison. You prayed relentlessly for your nation and the nations of the world. Rest in Christ till we see in God's presence when all the saints shall gather. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'd like to do a prayer for uh, those who uh, will require uh, deliverance. So here I go. So Lord Jesus Christ, you lift it after me. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead. You redeemed me by your blood and I belong to you. I want to live for you. I confess all my sins, known and unknown. I'm sorry for them all. I renounce them all. I forgive all others as I want you to forgive me. Forgive me now and cleanse me with your blood. I thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses me now from all sins. And I come to you now as my deliverer. You know my special needs, the things that binds, that torments, that defiles, that evil spirit, that unclean spirit. I claim the promise of your word. Whosoever that calleth on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. I call upon you now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, deliver me and set me free. Satan, I renounce you and all your works. I lose myself from you. In the name of Jesus, I command you to lead me right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let it come from your heart and see the salvation of the Lord. Now, are you sick or in need for deliverance or restoration? For those who are sick or unwell in whatever shape or form or needing deliverance or restoration, can they touch the dot on the, on the text that you receive or the, through the voice, uh, the video that we're communicating right now? Now, faith is seeing the precise positive outcome of your current situation, knowing that Jesus has done his part more than 2,000 years ago to secure your healing and deliverance, restoration as a down payment, trusting that that down payment is available to draw from, like a positive balance in your checking account with the bank, no question asked. As we agree with you and pronounce be healed in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now, I pray now, by the authority you have granted unto me and unto them, I exercise that authority now in faith with their anger against the enemy and hunger to get what you have freely given unto them. I cause every illness, every disease, be it cancer, be it COVID-19, be it spirit of infirmities, be it demonic possession or oppression, be it the spirit of poverty, setback, delayed fulfillment of what God has already determined and released. We come against the anomaly now by the authority in the name of Jesus. We bind them, we cause them to their root, and we cast them out by authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
healing. We call for the release of healing, the release of deliverance, the release of restoration into their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for testimonies that are abiding to your glory and honor and adoration. Thank you for souls that have been added to your kingdom as a result of this message, the miracles that we are already seeing right now and manifesting for your glory in the name of Jesus. It is done in Jesus' name. Now, touch the spot, highlight it as a point of contact, begin, uh, confess with your mouth, I am healed, I am delivered, I am restored in my spirit, in my soul, in my body, and all around me in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, amen. Begin to do what you could not do before and begin to confess unto full healing. Deliverance, restoration becomes a fruit in your life. Uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Stay hungry for all of God. Stay angry and stay, and take back all that the enemy has held back from you in Jesus' name. Testify to the healing of, for God's glory and to the shame of the enemy. Send us an email or WhatsApp us if you still need us to agree with you on the issue. So you can go to our website at otakada.org, O-T-A-K-A-D-A dot O-R-G and build up your faith or get all the contact details and come back on to us. Share wide this content so that it can be a blessing. And you can subscribe to our channel on the YouTube channel so that you can stay up to date with the contents uh, that are coming out. But also, my name is Ambassador Mandy Ogwajo Ogbe Otakada Cyber Church again. Uh, uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his continents to shine upon you and give you peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. May he do a new thing in your life that nothing can gain say. May he cause the lines to begin to fall for you in pleasant places to the glory of, your, of his name and to the shame of the enemy. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.